Okay, hi everybody. Um, we're going to get started right away so we can kind of try and catch up a little bit of the time that's been lost today uh, and so we don't get cut off by the tannoy right at the end as well, which should be fun. Um, my name's Jonathan Mill and I'm the general manager for Seltra here in, in EMEA. For those of you who don't know Seltra, we're a technology company focused around display advertising and we've really moved from mobile to cross screen as the, the world's moved from mobile to cross screen. And what I'm going to focus on today is the future of display advertising. And what we really, um, what I'm going to do is talk about a series of things that will define that future. So the agenda you can see before you touches on all of those items. So um, it's going to be about mobile first, cross screen, finding a balance between media and creative, how HTML5 fits into that. Think about smarter creatives, uh, new and more appropriate ad formats for the devices and mediums that, that we're using, uh, and uh, sort of talk about where we are today and, and where we're going moving forward. I'm going to set a tiny bit of a scene around this very, very quickly. You've had kind of stats thrown at you all day, I'd imagine, probably no, no end of stats. Quick show of hands, how many here are familiar with Mary Meeker? Okay, probably about a third roughly. So. I'm going to fill your day with joy at this point. So Mary Meeker is probably the most famous internet trends analyst out there. Um, way back in the early 90s, uh, she was a, a, an analyst um, at Morgan Stanley, and she was the, um, the lead on lots of their big um, tech IPO. So she led the, the Netscape IPO and so forth. And through that particular process, she learned an awful lot about the economics of uh, the internet, but also learned a lot about consumer behavior and the, un and the sort of bigger picture trends that were driving the industry forward. Um, around that time, she started publishing these internet trends reports, and she's published them roughly annually or so ever since then. Today, she's a, an analyst for a venture capital company <coughs> called Perkins, and she continues to publish this stuff. Um, back in May was her most recent internet trends report. Um, they, they are about 160 slides or pages very, very hard-hitting content. Every slide is tremendously high value. I'm going to share just a couple of those to help set the scene. Um, when you receive the materials after today, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the appendix, uh, how to get access to this Mary Mika stuff, some real view research, some other benchmark data, and so forth. So there's kind of a wider set of data for you to look at afterwards. Um, this is probably Mary Meeker's most famous chart. You may have seen this, you may have seen versions of this uh, around. And what this does, it really shows time spent with different types of media, um, so that's sort of the gold bars here, versus ad spend that goes towards those different types of media. And a couple of things that really stand out here. Firstly, um, if you look at the print side of things, about 5% of media consumption time is spent on print, um, but it still attracts about 19% of ad spend. Second, about 20% of media consumption time. And there are trends here, so you can see media consumption time on mobile is going up, whereas print is going down. 20% um, of time spent with mobile, but only 4% of ad spend going towards mobile. So the kind of data tells us that ad spend is going to continue to move to mobile until these things kind of even out a little bit. Um, next, if you think about the adoption of smartphone and tablet devices compared to desktop and laptop PCs, and TV, there are some very interesting trends going on. So you can see this, this chart shows you the number of units shipped globally uh, since 1999. Um, you'll see the blue dashed and dotted lines, uh, sort of the blue lines are the mobile related lines. And the key trend here is really in the last 10 years since smart mobile devices have been around, we're seeing four to five times as many of these devices shipped as PCs and TVs. Um, you, of course, you know, we all know there's a huge take up of these devices or, or consumption on these devices, and this is telling us a story as, as why. And think about it this way, a slightly different way. How many of you rush out to buy a new cool TV when they're launched versus rush out to buy a new cool phone? Um, the trend is certainly to buy new cool phones and devices, less so around televisions. Then if you think about device adoption, the next thing we need to think about is time spent with these devices. So this chart shows you the distribution of screen minutes um, for different countries across laptop, TV, smartphone, and tablet. And you can see in many countries, and this has been covered a few times today, about half of consumer time um, can be spent with mobile devices today, and that's only growing, so more time with mobile um, than with uh, TV in many cases. 
Um, however, this usage isn't happening in a serial manner, it's happening very much in a, in a concurrent manner. So people are watching TV and doing other things at the same time. This has a profound effect for, for advertisers, for retailers, for brands, as well as for their agencies in having to adjust to this sort of new type of behavior from consumers around using multiple screens at the same time. And lastly, um, the IAB has done some fantastic research around real view. They released this um, uh, just sort of at the beginning of the year that really kind of helped understand how people really use con consumer devices. Again, there's a link to the whole research. They actually had people wear a fisheye camera in the middle of their chest for a number of days, and it took a picture every five seconds. So that way, when they... Um, when they did some survey-based data, they didn't have to say, how many times did you use your mobile phone yesterday? And you might say, I don't know, 50. They actually knew through the, through, through the pictures exactly what people were doing. Fascinating research. But what it told them overall is that phones are really an extension of ourselves. They're a very different type of device, very personal, very private to us. We see them as our lifesaver in many cases. And we have different feelings about these devices than we do with other devices. And if we think about this for a moment, there's kind of a pretty strong psychological narrative that goes along with the usage of the smartphone. Um, earlier this year, the IAB had their mobile engage conference, so a mobile focused version of, of this event, about 800 or so people. One of the speakers was a chap called Dr. Simon Hampton from the University of East Anglia, who's a psychologist. And his, he did a 15 minute talk about why mobile was very important psychologically and how it was opening up a type of behavior to our minds that we've always wanted to wanted to um, wanted to do but haven't really been able to do because we haven't had the right device there there's about a 15 minute video in my appendix there's a, there's a link to watch that video to do it justice but one of the comparisons he made was very much in line with the IAB's research is that the smartphone is like today's version of a diary um, and if you think about it, it's got your most personal thoughts, it's got your social media, your pictures, your text messages. It's a very personal device, almost in many ways more, more powerful than diary. Um, the suggestion he made was, imagine if you're an advertiser, if you had the ability to advertise inside somebody's diary. If you think about that for a moment, you'd probably be a little bit scared about that prospect, and you'd probably think very, very carefully about the message that you would use to attract that consumer's attention. And we should be thinking about smartphones or mobile devices in a bit of a similar way as well, as they're kind of this new device on the, on the block that's changing our attitudes around advertising. So when we think about mobile as sort of a, a prevalent device that's growing significantly, the thing that's driving this big change in display advertising, um, we really have to think about what consumers think. Um, consumers have come to expect extremely slick, engaging experiences on their devices. Um, if, and those, those expectations um, carried forward from the call apps that they're using move forward into advertising. So as advertisers and agencies, if we aren't delivering against that sort of promise of a high quality UI, then um, we're kind of damaging our brand in some way because consumer expectation is very high. Mary Mika says it quite in, in quite a nice way as well. And this, this slide from her recent content, RIP bad user interfaces. She makes a point very clearly that consumers expect beautiful interfaces when they are beautiful, and these can be the apps versus advertising, they adopt them in their droves. When they're not beautiful and very user-friendly, they ignore them, they completely eschew them. So the case, this is the case now across both mobile and desktop and other, device, other devices because the quality of the mobile user experience has driven a much higher expectation for consumers across the piece. Okay, so I'd like to share with you a couple of examples now about what good mobile advertising is all about. Firstly, um, here's a, a rich experience for Burberry on a, on a tablet. So um, this is the type of advertising you see a lot of, a sort of a nice, rich, um, colorful, creative, which is telling a story. But really, the brand wants to take up the whole screen of the device. So when the user engages with, uh, with that creative, it fills the screen, and the user is encouraged to use the particular characteristics of that device. In this case, the tablet, we can tilt and turn. So as you tilt and turn the device, the coloring of the product, this in this case a very nice handbag, kind of flows through. Very, very simple, but it's using the unique capabilities of this device to deliver that user experience. That's really what good mobile and tablet advertising is all about. Now, the thing that's driving this, of course, is the touch interface. It makes these devices more personal um, and engaging as, uh, than any other device has, has ever been. Um, but the issue, the, the problem we have with, with mobile and to quite a big extent tablet um, and desktop, sorry, advertising too, 
is that creative is often forgotten. We focus so much of our time and energy on media, the transport to get the message to the consumer, how we're going to buy that media, where we're going to buy that media, where we're going to find the audience, that we forget to think about the message we're going to deliver. And of course, if we deliver the wrong message, then we've probably wasted our media investment in the first place. The reason why this happens is kind of broadly described here. So this is a, a mobile Lumascape produced by uh, a company of investment bankers in New York called Luma Partners. And what you can see, it really shows the continuum from consumers on, on the one side through to marketers on the other side, how they're connected. Each different box is a different type of company that exists in that ecosystem, and each logo is an individual company that exists in those boxes. What it doesn't really call out is that 90% of those companies inside all of those boxes are focused on finding audiences for advertisers. The rest of the 10% are only those that are thinking about creativity and measurement of how that advertising works, and that's why we have this massive over-reliance on media versus the message. Put simply, reaching the audience is only a small part of the puzzle. We need to focus on reaching them, engaging them, and measuring them in equal part to get full value back from advertising. So with that as a context as you like, how do we need to address cross-screen advertising? So we call this mobile-first cross-screen campaigns, and this involves delivering a consistent, rich consumer experience across all screens and making sure that the consumer has that consistent brand experience whichever screen they dip into. And the thing that's enabling that, that's allowing that to happen, is HTML or HTML5 advertising. In desktop, historically, we always used Flash for rich, engaging advertising. And in mobile, we used um, HTML5. Now, with um, mobile used to be a smaller silo, and we kind of got on with our desktop stuff. Now these two things are finding a level of equilibrium, and mobile is going to go beyond desktop from a volume and importance perspective. We need to bring these two things together in a single technology stack so we can effectively build one set of creatives, and distribute one set of advertising, and get one set of data across all screens. And HTML5 is the way to do that. So in terms of how that looks, is a really quick example for you. And um, this is a real world automotive campaign. So on a smartphone, perhaps the accelerometer will be the engagement mechanism for the consumer so they can tilt the phone to explore the interior of a car. On a tablet device where we have a larger screen or a larger canvas, we can enable the user to use a touch interface to steer the car to navigate around the vista they see before them. And then on a desktop interface, we can use the mouse to allow the consumer to, to mouse over to explore the interior in detail. And that approach allows for a single set of assets, a single build cycle, a single platform from a single person um, to give that, that um, efficient brand experience and save money for advertisers, agencies, and make it easier for media providers to, to deliver against that. Although creative doesn't kind of deliver uh, well, although great creative isn't always required to deliver the right message to consumers, creative doesn't stand alone. There are a few other pillars. Firstly, that creative needs to be intrinsically linked to the analytics alongside it. Because unless you understand how the consumer engages with the creative, you can't improve the creative um, dynamically in any way. Next, you need to have, have the capability to simply deliver more relevant ads. Your ads need to take external data signals, whether that be time, whether that be location, or whether that be weather, to make them more valid. And finally, they can, they can use dynamic content. So we can have the, the creative inside the ad dynamically changed based upon, um, based upon what works better. So perhaps you have a video you're going to play inside your ad. You could show a series of different poster images. And whichever poster image works best at encouraging consumers to play, you can weight the delivery of the campaign towards that very simply. And that's kind of the architecture of the future of display advertising, all of those things together. Now, there is one thing that's very broken in both mobile and display advertising, and that's really the format of ads. Oop. That's really the format of ads. Um, in mobile in particular, you see that 320 by 50 banners that take up a, a small percentage of the screen have become the core currency that's traded. Um, now, advertise, for advertisers, this is a challenge because you want to fill the screen with your message and with your brand. You don't want to just have less than 1% of consumers engage with that small banner to fill the screen. And we have a similar issue with a lack of um, with a lack of innovation with desktop formats for a long time. So one of the things we've been working on is a series of new formats that better address the particular screens we have. The first example here is a format called Interscroller. We launched actually last week. We developed it and we launched it with a telegraph. And the Interscroller uh, is an interstitial scroller which co combines kind of, um, basically produces a very high impact unit um, for, for, for the advertiser. So as you scroll along the page here, a page of the telegraph, it will simply snap into place 
Um, the user can then engage with video, with rich content, various product information as desired. And when they're finished, they can simply scroll away to, to move away from that content, and the page content continues. So that's one example of the type of new formats that are coming to market across all devices that will be better for consumers and actually better for advertisers. Um, so when we take all of those building blocks into consideration, we're really left with two key drivers for the future of display advertising. The fact that the future will be mobile first, cross-screen HTML5, with creatives that have better messaging is kind of a given. They're the basic building blocks to let the industry scale across all screens. What will deliver the highest value and improve returns for advertisers are really two things. Firstly, this programmatic creative, so that combination of dynamic creative optimization and creative re relevancy that will drive lift and engagement and results for advertisers to ensure the media opportunity isn't wasted. And secondly, the new ad formats. So the ad formats of the future, these are the formats that are starting to arrive now, and they'll deliver a much more engaging experience for, for consumers and advertisers and publishers. So to recap, we see the future of display advertising as mobile first, cross-screen, balanced media and creative, powered by HTML5, with smart creators that optimize themselves, and new appropriate formats uh, for the digital present and, and future that we're now in. Um, thank you very much, that's all I'm going to cover today. Before you depart, um, please don't forget to fill out your feedback forms. That's a kind of a, a plea from the IAB to make sure you put that together. Happy to take any questions as well. Thank you. We've only just begun.